Today's session we're going to be looking at pseudocode and flowcharts and how the relationship between both of these are. So last lesson we looked at pseudocode and structured English. Some questions that you're going to get in the exam are going to be based on how to convert pseudocode into flowcharts or probably more likely how to write pseudocode from a flowchart. You should be able to describe and use the process of stepwise refinement to express an algorithm to a level of detail from which the task may be programmed. So you're normally given a scenario which you need to break down into perhaps modules or steps that can be used by a programmer to code. And finally, the use of logic statements to define parts of an algorithm solution. So we're going to be looking at all of that today. So let's begin by revisiting the symbols and how you can create flowchart symbols and the relevant pseudocode from it. So none of that's too tricky. You've done this before. So just familiarize yourself with this, pause the video. You know how input or output in pseudocode refers to the parallelogram symbol, how a decision box is either an if or a case statement, and it can also be part of a for repeat and while loop. And when you're using a for repeat and while loop, you're normally going to have a returning arrow, which just goes from maybe a decision box back to another part of the program. And then you have something called an assignment, which normally is that arrow in pseudocode. Normally when we try to assign a value to an identifier or a variable, or we're trying to do some kind of calculation, we're going to be using this rectangular box, which we normally call the process box, basically. So that's equivalent to that arrow in pseudocode. So once you know the equivalent pseudocode to flowchart symbols, if in an exam you're given a flowchart, you can easily decipher the right pseudocode lines based on the symbols. Now let's analyze a typical flowchart. How do we break that down into pseudocode? So on screen you see an example of a flowchart. The first step would be to just label every step and identify the common patterns. For example, steps three to six can probably be a nested if statement. And for each step, normally you'd be writing one line of pseudocode unless it's got two steps in there, but most of the time in exams, they'll normally will give you one step. So pause the video and try to convert this flowchart into pseudocode. We'll have a look at the solution in a minute. So pause the video, have a go, write the pseudocode for it, and then unpause the video and we'll discuss the solution. Okay, so on screen, this is one possible solution in pseudocode for that flowchart. Chances are yours is going to be along the same lines. What you should be picking up right now is command words such as output, input, if, then, else, and if, all of those are in capitals. Get into the habit of writing these in capitals. Often under exam pressure, we start writing them in lower case, but if you're in the right habit from the beginning, we won't forget that. You're not gonna lose marks if you write them in lower case, but it's just nice and it, it gives the impression to the examiner that you are an A star student, you know pseudocode inside out. So let's start by looking at this pseudocode. You should have had an output statement, an input statement to get the mark in, then you should have compared that mark identifier variable with various different conditions and given an output or allocated an output to a grade and then in the end, you should have outputted that grade. Now, if you got that, fantastic. Next up is stepwise refinement. So problems don't just automatically solve themselves. Often complex problems need to be broken down further. And to do this, we use the technique called stepwise refinement. Normally what happens is you'll end up with an upside down tree or a hierarchical structure diagram, like the one you see on screen. And we keep refining every step until each step is achievable and simple. Now your task is to look at the check time module 
and refine it in line with the other two modules, which are set the alarm and sound the alarm. So what could happen in check time that allows us to sound the alarm at the right time? Okay, have a go. Pause the video and complete this diagram. And let's look at the solution. You should have a start. You should have called a get time function and it's a function. How do we know that? Well, you can in a flowchart donate a function with a rectangular box with diagonal lines in there, just like the one on the screen. You won't need to use that in, in the exam, but just in case you were ever wondering on how do you represent that, it that's the way we do it. So we're gonna call a function called get time, which gets the current time. We're going to have a decision where we say is the time equal to the alarm time? If it is, then we sound the alarm and that's the end of the module. If it's not, we wait for a set number of time, normally around 30 seconds, and then we go back and get the time again, and then we check the whole process. So if you've got something similar to that, fantastic. If you haven't, just uh, have a look and understand how the process of breaking the problem down into smaller chunks was the cheat. Now, stepwise refinement example can also be in the form of structured English, where you will have a task given to you, in this case, our old task of entering the time taken to run marathon in hours, minutes, and seconds, calculating and storing that time in seconds, and now putting the marathon time in seconds. Step one itself, enter the hours, enter the minutes, enter the seconds. You can refine that into three steps, and then you can further refine those steps into perhaps inputting the value for hours, checking input is in the range of two to eight, because that's normally the time that somebody takes to run a marathon, and reject any out of range data or something which is not a whole number, repeat and go back to step 1.1.1, then accept and store any reasonable value, then you do the same thing for minutes, and then you do the same thing for seconds. So technically, each of these steps can be divided into four steps, and then you end up with 12 steps just for the first one. So even though the problem is very simple in human terms, when we want to break it down, we can end up with multiple steps. And often, as humans, we just simply say, well, okay, we know what it means by entering minutes, hours, and seconds. But for a programmer, that level of detail is necessary because with that level of detail, they can now put in validation, which wouldn't be possible before. So that's all for today. You should know now the difference between flowcharts and pseudocode and how to convert from one form to the other. You should be able to identify the symbols of a flowchart and you should know what is meant by stepwise refinement. So if in an exam you're given a question where you're given a problem and you need to break it down or you're given a structure chart, you need to be able to complete it using stepwise refinement. That's all for today. So make sure that you do practice breaking problems down and get back to me if you have any questions. Next lesson, we'll start to look at arrays and data types and all those kind of things. So get into the nitty gritty of pseudocode and coding. Now I'm going to leave you with a Python task for the remainder of the lesson. Our marathon program, which is now quite heavily detailed, can you update or can you code this marathon program using Python? Make sure that the relevant validations are in place as well. And just double check that when you enter the personal best time in seconds, validation also applies at that particular point as well. Have a go and share the code with me. Bye for now.